Alexander with your food for thought. Today's food for thought is taking a look at Abraham, um, specifically Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Um, and the thought that I want to put out there is, do you trust God with the promise? This definitely is a personal word. The word always is to the, the giver first. And I have to say that this word um, is screaming at me on this afternoon. And so I wanted to come and I wanted to share. We can see in the book of Genesis where God uh, repeatedly gives Abraham the promise. Of course, he was Abram first and then God changed his name to Abraham. But in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 13, chapter 15, chapter 17, and then even reminding him in Genesis chapter 22, God makes him a promise. He tells him that he is going to make him the father of many nations. Um, if you go back to Genesis chapter 12, which is our first time that we see God making the promise to Abram, chapter 12, verses uh, one through three, it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So we, st we see from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 12 and throughout the, cha the chapters leading up to chapter 22, God has made this promise to Abram. Abraham. He has said to him that um, I am going to make you the father of many nations, that your descendants, that in your seed, it shall be blessed, that your descendants shall be great. Um, in one of the verses, he tells him that his descendants shall be like the stars innumerable, that there will be so many that he won't be able to count. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the promise. And when God makes a promise, Abraham didn't have a son. Not only did Abraham and Sarah not have a son, amen, but they were up in age, making the impo th this, this thing seem like it was impossible. A lot of the times God makes a promise to us that seems impossible, that seems like, like, Lord, how are you going to do this? How are you going to make this, how are you going to perform this thing that you've spoken to me, a person who was unable to make what you said come to pass, amen. But yet we know that the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen, which means yes and let it be so. God is not a man, amen. The scripture says that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. So he has made this promise to Abram. He's made this promise to Abraham. And then we even see uh, in in chapter 18 where um, Sarah laughs and, and, and she's like, like this, this is just not possible, amen. That as she's listening to a, a conversation, she knows that they're up in their age and she, she laughs like, I'm, I'm beyond the years of bearing any children. And the Lord hears her laugh and he says in verse 14, is anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. Let what... Uh, God spoke to Sarah, let it be an encouragement to you as you are waiting on the promise and even to myself as we're waiting to see the promises promises of God be fulfilled. Is there anything that is too hard for God? So as we come into chapter 22, where uh, Abraham's faith, amen, is solidified for God, where it is confirmed. But there, there are some things in the scripture before we get to verse 8 that I like to point out. Ver the very first verse said that as after these things had come to pass, God decides to test Abraham. Your faith has to be tested. It has to be tried. It has to be proven. Amen. James talks about the testing and the trying of our faith and how it works patience, which means it works perseverance. It works endurance. Amen. Amen. As God tests our faith, as we're waiting for the promise, he is testing it so that we're able to endure as we're waiting for him to fulfill what he has spoken and what he has promised. We have to be able to endure until we make it to the manifestation of what God has promised. We have to be able to stay the course. Amen. So first thing I want to point out is that he tests Abraham, that this is going to be a test of Abraham's faith. A test to see, can he still hold on to what uh, God has said to him? So he, he comes to him, God comes to him and he tells him that I want you to take your son. And then God uh, reiterates for him, your only son. You got to remember that the promise has to come through, amen, the son. I want you to take your son and I want you to take him up on the mount and I want you to sacrifice him. I want you to offer him there as a burnt offering, amen, as a sacrifice. He wants 
Abraham to take his only son, the son that is what God has promised. So he wants him to take the promise <laughs> and he wants him to go and offer it as, an, as a, a burnt sacrifice. Amen. Again, do you trust God with the promise? So as you read, we don't hear of this exchange or this back and forth like Moses had with God. We don't hear Abraham going back and forth with God and saying, but wait a minute, you want me to do what? You told me. No, we just see obedience. As you move on down through the verses and as you get to verse five, it says, and Abraham said to his young men, so he gets his son, he gets everything he needs. He takes some young men up into the mountain with him and he says to them, amen, stay here with the donkey, the lad and I will go yonder and worship. But here is the statement of faith, and we will come back to you. God had just told him to go up and sacrifice his son, but yet he's speaking in confidence and faith to these men that not only will I return, amen, but the son that God has just told me to go and sacrifice, we will return as well. And so Isaac is looking like, wait a minute, stop the presses. Where is the, um, we don't have a lamb to offer for the burnt offering. And here is where Abraham shows that he has trusted that what God has spoken, that he will perform. He says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham, now I, there is a, a moment where Abraham says to God, now you keep on speaking this promise to me if I could just say it that way. But yet, I don't have, I don't have a son. <laughs> I don't have, you know. I don't have, um, uh, I don't have a son. So he says in chapter 15, he says, Abram, Abram, before he changes his name, he says, Lord God, what will you, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Elijah of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. So at this point, Abraham was like, you keep on speaking this promise to me, but I don't have a son. You keep on speaking this promise, but I don't have, uh, I don't have the means. It appears I don't have the means, amen, to receive the promise that you have for me. But then yet in chapter 22, amen, he is now confident that God who has given him a son, amen, who has fulfilled this promise portion of the promise and has given him a son he he i imagine that it makes it even more solidified for him that god is going to do what he said he's going to do and so he tells his son in verse eight my son god will provide god will provide and then we skip on down to verse 14 and abraham called the name of the place the lord will provide do you trust god with the promise amen you sometimes our walk of faith is a tough one when the things that we're seeing with our natural eye isn't lining up to what God has spoken. But we can't put our focus on the things that are before us. Sometimes we have to take a glance back, amen, to see behind us and how God has come through time after time after time and has, how he has, his word has come to pass in our lives time after time after time. Sometimes we have to take our eyes off of our situation, amen, and we have to look at the situations and the testimonies of those around us. The word says that we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. We can see in this person's life how God came through. We can see in this person's life how the promise was fulfilled. We can see in this person's life how they're walking, amen, the very thing that God has spoken. And let that be our encouragement that we can trust God with the promise. That if he has spoken it, if he has given it to us, if he has said it, amen, that he will perform it. So my encouragement to you on today is just as Abraham had that confidence, amen, in God to know that the Lord was going to provide Keep the faith, stay the course, keep your hand in his hand, amen, and know that God will provide. This has been your food for thought. You have a great afternoon.